in this section we want to start to look at the graph of the derivative function. We want to be able to draw those graphical connections between the graph of the original function and the graph of the derivative function. So for example, here on the first set of axes I've got the graph of f of x which is x squared plus 2, so a parabola translated up by 2, and then the graph of its derivative. Okay, So we know that in this case, because I've given you the equation, the derivative is going to be 2x. That's the line y equals 2x. Okay, But the point is, is that even if I don't give you the equation of f of x, you should still be able to draw a rough sketch of what the derivative graph looks like. So what we want to think about is what's actually happening here. So if, for example, let's just take some x values. So let's have a think about when x is equal to 0. Okay. So what we're saying here is that the blue graph is describing the gradient of the red graph at this x value. So we can see that the gradient of the red graph, the original function, is clearly zero, which is why the blue graph is at zero. Okay? When we think about the blue graph, the y-axis represents derivative, represents gradient. This is x versus the gradient for the blue graph, whereas the red graph is x x coordinate versus y coordinate, the blue graph is x coordinate versus gradient. Okay, So if we think about another point, for example, so let's go across here to when x equals 1. Okay, So the red graph is telling us when x equals 1, y equals, in this case, 3. But the blue graph is telling us when x equals 1, the gradient of the red graph is whatever it is. It's going to be 2 in this case. Okay, So the blue graph tells us about the gradient. We can see that you know over here, the gradient of the red graph, which is going to be up there somewhere, the gradient at that point is going to be equal to that value. Okay, the gradient here is about six. So the blue graph is describing the gradient at every point. Okay, so for the blue graph, the x-axis is obviously x values, the y-axis is gradient. For the red graph, the x-axis is x values, the y-axis is y value. Okay, so they're not comparing the same things, um, but what you should, what it means you should be able to do is you should be able to draw a bit of a rough sketch of a gradient. Let's just have a think before we move on from this one about, say, for example, an x coordinate back here. So when x is negative one, it's clear that the gradient of the parabola is negative, and so that's why your gradient function is giving a negative value. Your gradient function sits below the x-axis because that's where gradient is negative down here and it's positive up here. So if you have, if your uh, original function has positive gradient, then your gradient function will be sitting above the x-axis. If your original function has negative gradient, then your gradient function will be sitting below the x-axis. Okay. We're not looking at the gradient of the gradient function. That's not what's relevant. The gradient function is literally describing what is the gradient at this particular of the red curve at this particular x value. So let's, for example, think about this one here. If um, your original function is the red graph, which is a cubic, with looks like its point of inflection is at two negative one. Well, it doesn't look like that. The equation tells us that's where it is. Okay. Um, then we can draw the derivative alongside that. So if we think about some points, so I know here that the gradient at this point when x is equal to 2 is 0. So that's why my gradient function is up there on the x-axis. The gradient is equal to 0. Okay. I also know that after that point I've got small negative gradient bigger negative gradient, bigger negative gradient, bigger negative gradient, bigger negative gradient. So that's why my gradient function starting out at small negative gradient, bigger negative gradient, bigger negative gradient, you know, big negative gradient. Okay. I also know that before um, that turning point or that point of inflection, I should say, the gradient is also negative. The gradient for the cubic is always negative except for at that one point. So that's why my gradient function is sitting completely below the x-axis. Okay. So again, what we're seeing here is the gradient of this curve is a smallish negative value. It's actually equal to that amount. Okay. That is the gradient of the red curve at this particular point. Okay. The gradient here, um, the gradient of the red curve here, it's a negative, a bigger negative value. It's actually that value. Okay. Looks like it's somewhere between three and four, negative three and negative four. Sorry. Okay, so it's about drawing a graph that represents the gradient of the original graph. Alright, so what we want to do is think generally about 
drawing the gradient function. You also want to think a little bit about what you know about derivative. You want to think in particular about where is the gradient clearly zero because that's where my gradient function will be on the x-axis. Where is the gradient positive? Where is it negative? That'll guide you as to the shape. But also given that we're working mostly with polynomial functions here, we want to think about what we know about the function. So for example, if I have a look at this graph here, it looks to me like it's a cubic graph. Now I know when I differentiate a cubic function, I get a quadratic function. The process of differentiation reduces all the powers by one. And so it'll go from being a degree three polynomial to a degree two. So I'm gonna expect my derivative graph to look like a parabola. Then I'm gonna start with key points. So it looks, I know when it here, when X is A, the gradient is zero. So my gradient graph is gonna have an X intercept here. Similarly, when X is B, the gradient is also zero. So I'm gonna have an X intercept here. So now I know it's a parabola that goes through these two points. So is it going to be this parabola? 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 Okay. Now there's some of those questions that we're not going to know the answer to. This isn't going to be a perfectly precise graph because we don't know the original function. But what we do want to think about is, okay, between A and B, the gradient is clearly negative. So that means my gradient function is going to have to be below the x-axis between A and B. When x is less than a, we clearly have positive gradient. So my gradient is going to be above the x-axis here. And when x is bigger than b, I also have positive gradient. And so my gradient function is going to be above. Now I know it has to be a parabola that goes above, hits, crosses the x-axis at a, below, crosses the x-axis at b and above. So I know it's going to be a parabola that goes like this. Now, I don't know whether it's this parabola, whether it's this parabola, I don't know, it could be any of those, it doesn't matter. That's not what I'm interested in. We don't have enough information to work out how, what is the smallest, what is the most negative gradient? Okay, we don't have enough information to know where that turning point sits, how low it's going to go. Hence, we don't know how steep the graph is going to, the gradient graph is going to be. That's not the point. It's about getting the shape right and including as much information as we do know. So we know that these um, x intercepts are at A and B. Oh, sorry, try again. Okay, that's it. That's sufficient. We've answered the question. Um, so let's work through some other examples. Sketch the graph of the gradient function for each of the following. Okay, so this is a quadratic function, part A. And so I know when I differentiate a quadratic, I get a linear function. So I definitely know I'm going to draw a straight line here. Okay, I also know my gradient is clearly zero when x equals three. So we're going to cross the x-axis here. I know after x equals three, the graph has positive gradient. So my derivative is going to sit above here. And I know before x equals three, my graph has negative gradient. So my derivative is going to need to sit down here. So therefore I need a straight line. I don't know, I don't have enough information to work out what the gradient of that straight line will be, but I know that it's going to start below the x-axis, cross the x-axis at three, and then go above the x-axis. Okay, so if you drew this line, that would be correct. If you drew this, oh, sorry, let's try that again. If you drew this line, that would be correct. Okay, but a straight line that goes through the point three zero with positive gradient. Fine. Um, okay, so let's have a think about B. Now, in this case, we can be more precise. So B is a straight line, a linear graph. So, you know, MX plus C. We know when we differentiate MX plus C, we get M we get gradient. So it'll just be y equals a constant value. So it'll be a horizontal line, okay? Because the gradient is always the same. Now we actually have enough information here to work out exactly what that gradient should be. The rise is six and the run is two. So the gradient is six over two, which is three. So we have constant gradient of three. So again, you've got scale defined here. So make sure you're consistent. If that's six up there, then halfway along here should be three. It's a bit high, sorry and it's gonna be a horizontal line. So in this case, we actually precisely know what the equation of the gradient function is. It's y equals three. Okay, part C, now that looks like it might be a quartic function. So if we differentiate a quartic, we're going to get a cubic. So let's expect our graph to be a cubic. Um, we can see there are three points of zero gradient, three turning points, okay. This point here has zero gradient when x equals negative two. 
when x equals 0 we have 0 gradient and when x equals positive 2 we have 0 gradient. Okay then we want to think about the sign of the gradient. Okay so between negative 2 and 0 the gradient is clearly of the curve is clearly negative so my graph is going to sit down here. Between 0 and 2 the gradient of the curve is clearly positive. Okay, so my graph is going to sit up here. When x is bigger than 2, the gradient of the graph is clearly negative. So my graph is going to sit down here. And when x is less than negative 2, the gradient of my graph is clearly positive. So it sits up here. Okay, so we're going to have a cubic shape that crosses the x-axis at negative 2, 0 and positive 2. And that starts off positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, so we should be able to draw that in. So positive gradient, zero gradient, negative gradient, zero gradient, positive gradient, zero gradient, negative gradient. We know this is two zero, we know this is zero zero, and we know this one is negative two zero. So cubic in shape, x intercepts in the right place, and um, the graph going in the right direction. So in this case, this way rather than this way, um, just using what we know about the gradient. Okay, part D. So this is a constant line. This is y equals 3. Okay, so thinking about drawing the gradient function, it's clear that the gradient of this line is always 0. So the gradient function will clearly be y equals 0. Okay, another example. I think this is the second. Oh, they're all called example 2. <laughs> Let's go with so we had example 1, example 2. This is uh, example 3 and this one down here will be example 4. Copy paste error, sorry. Okay, so for the graph picture below, which looks like a cubic graph with turning points at negative 1, negative 4 and 2, 1, find, okay, let's, in, let's interpret what this is telling us. So we've got a set of x values. So a set of x values, so we'll answer in set notation. A set of x values where f dash x is bigger than zero. So where gradient, which is derivative, is bigger than zero. So the set of x values where the gradient is bigger than zero. Okay, so let's have a think about that. The gradient is clearly bigger than zero, positive that is, between these two turning points. That's where we've got positive gradient. It's negative here and it's negative here. So we've got positive gradient between these two turning points. Okay. We want the set of x values where we have positive gradient. So in terms of x values, it's very clear we have positive gradient between these two x values. That's where we have positive gradient. Okay. So not at x equals negative 1, because that would be when gradient equals 0. Not at x equals 2, because that would be when gradient equals 0, but between x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. So we can either write that as the set of x values such that negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 2, or we can use our interval notation, which is also set notation, and say that x is an element of negative, the interval from negative 1 to 2. Okay, part B, we want the set of x values where the gradient is negative. So we know gradient is negative out here and also out here. Okay, so it's going to be these x values out here, these x values out here. Okay, so again, not when x equals negative 1 because gradient is 0 at negative 1, but when x is less than negative 1. And not when x equals 2, because that's where gradient will be 0, but when x is bigger than 2, the gradient will be um, negative. So we, again, we can either write it as a set of x values such that x is less than negative 1, union x is bigger than 2, or we can use interval notation. So x is an element of the interval from negative infinity up to negative 1, union from 2 up to infinity. So again, um, reliant on our set notation back from our functions and relations chapter. So, you know, methods, it's not just about individual topics. All of our previous understandings continue to feed through into other topics.
part C, give the set of x values such that f of f dashed x, so the gradient, is equal to 0. So there are only two x values where the gradient equals 0, but we've been asked to give a set. So that would be x is an element of the set of values which just contain negative 1 and 2. So it must be the curly brackets. Remember if you wrote it as negative 1 to 2, that would be an interval suggesting that every number between 1 and 2, inclusive of 1 and 2, is where we have 0 gradient, which is not true. Even if we wrote it as this way, um, it would be every number between 1 and 2, not including negative 1 and 2. Okay, So you need a, a set that just lists values and that's where we need to use the curly brackets. Sketch the graph of y equals f dash x on the same set of axes. Okay, so we've established that we've got 0 gradient when x equals negative 1. So my gradient function will cross the x-axis when x equals negative 1. It'll cross the x-axis when x equals 2. We think that the original function looks like it's probably a cubic and therefore its derivative is a parabola. We can see that we have negative gradient before, sorry, negative gradient before negative 1, then positive gradient, then negative gradient. So again, remembering positive gradient means above the x-axis. Negative gradient means our gradient function will be below the x-axis. All right, we know that's the point 2, 0. We know that's the point negative 1, 0. Again, we don't know how steep that parabola is, where that turning point sits, but a parabola that's upside down with its x-intercepts at negative 1 and 2. Okay, finally, below is a CAS plot of the graph of y equals log base e of x. So remember, we talked about log graphs back at the end of semester 1. Log with a base of e. Remember, e is a number that's a bit less than 3, 2.718 approximately. Um, so this is the graph of log e of x. You might also remember that your CAS uses ln to refer to log base e, the natural log. Okay, so that's what it looks like. I've already drawn that on my CAS over here. Okay, same graph, same window. Make a sketch of the gradient function on the diagram above. Okay, so we want to think about what we know about gradient to draw a rough sketch of what's happening with the gradient function. So the first thing I'm noticing, which is the first thing I look for, um, is that there are the gradient is never zero here. Okay, there's no turning points here. The graph doesn't go from being positive to negative gradient or negative to positive gradient. Okay. In fact, interestingly, the gradient if I draw in tangents, is always positive. It starts out with a very big positive gradient, really big positive gradient when x is very, very small, okay? And then it gets less and less, okay? Less and less steep until we've got, you know, not very steep gradient. So what we might be seeing is very, very big gradient values becoming less and less big, but never actually reaching zero. So we're getting an asymptote sort of thing happening. So again, this is purely just looking at what is happening to the gradient and how might I approximate that in a sketch. I'm not asking you to know what the derivative of log e of x is. That's not the point of this. Um, in fact, that is why I've asked you this question. We don't know. In the previous questions, we've gone, okay, well, we know the derivative is going to be a quadratic, so we know we're going to draw a parabola. Here we don't know what the derivative is, but let's still think through the logic of what is happening to the gradient. Now, I'm not suggesting that my graph is precise, my derivative, but just in terms of the shape, where it sits, where is it positive, is it big positive, negative positive, etc. Negative positive, sorry, <laughs> big positive or small positive. Um, okay, so use, then let's use our CAS to sketch the gradient function. So now that I've drawn in my CAS f1 of x is equal to log e of x, I'm going to open up the entry line. In the second line, I'm going to put the derivative, so it's going to be shift minus. I don't need to actually work out what the derivative is. I just want to draw the derivative of function 1. Ah, and there we get that here. Now, actually, there's a domain problem here because there actually shouldn't be this bit over here on the left. Um, that shouldn't be there at all, and that's because the, if the original graph doesn't exist, then the derivative of that graph can't exist. Um, so there's a bit of an issue here with domain, which we need to have some understanding about. But if we just look at the bit to the right of the x-axis, I've drawn a reasonably accurate um, guess of what the gradient function would look like. Okay, so the work today is um, from exercise 17D, and then in addition to that, there is also a worksheet with some more practice just sketching the gradient function.